In the Bible, it says, do you know that? Now, when you read that, do you know that? And you read something after that and you don't know it, go back and check on it. Because he didn't ask you, did you know or do you know that? So, do you know have to deal with knowledge? Knowledge is a weapon that I may what? Know him. Everything that you go through is to get you to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean everything, every circumstance, every situation. Come with me to 1 Corinthians, verse 32. This is what we're going to deal with today. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. We're going to deal with that today. Because we want our ground to be plowed And the purpose of plowing it is to produce a harvest. The word of God is the plow. The word of God is sown. The word of God is the seed to sow. The word of God is water. So we find out that according to 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter, verse 9, we find out that we are God's husbandry. We are his field. You ain't nobody field but God. You're not even your own fear because you do not have the right of purchase to yourself. You've got to understand when you receive Jesus as your savior, you relinquish every right. You don't have no rights. None. You relinquish them because he bought them all up. You ought to be glad that you don't have a right to yourself because yourself will mess you up, tell you out. Then he says, for we are laborers together with God. Now look what he said. We are laborers together. We who? Then he said, you are. He says, we are, and you are, we are laborers together with God. Well, who is he talking about? He's talking about the one that plants in water, laborers with God. See, everybody's not been called to the fivefold ministry. Most people have been called for salvation, called unto salvation to receive Jesus. And you help in the work and the fruitfulness of the church. And things don't start happening to you until you start coming into the reality that you've been called. When you start turning around and you done made some decisions to, you know, you need to let the Lord work with you. When you get ready to make that turn, because you done took heed to the call, whether it's salvation, whether it's called to be a saint, called to be in peace. Everything that God has is a call and the answer is in the call itself. You receive the call, you got the answer built inside of you. So then as soon as you heed the call of God or as soon as you turn your face to follow him, that's when things start coming to you. See, as long as you on your little merry way, you creating all that dumb stuff your own self. You create everything around you. But the minute you turn to the Lord, things change. Something else comes against you. I don't have no rights. I don't want any. I just don't want them. I had them all the years that I had them and I was wrong. My rights was wrong. Why? Because it was outside of Christ. It was built according to the world system and how I was taught all the way through school, everything that influenced me. So when you get to the point where you've made a decision to turn to the Lord, you got a different set of rules and different things come against you. So then the Lord says that if we didn't judge ourselves, you got to learn how to judge yourself. It's not just the judging card. The judging card is an example. Jesus is a righteous judge, but he said, if we don't judge ourselves, that he would chasten us so we wouldn't be condemned with the world. So then you have Christians that are carnal. They're carnal sons of God, right? That don't mean they're going to hell. You have Christians that are operated solely by their flesh, their sense knowledge. This whole Bible is revelation knowledge. Okay, then you have people that operate from revelation knowledge and people that operate from sense knowledge. Sense knowledge people. Let him plow. You can always have the spirit versus the what? Always. Can't get around it. When you receive from the spirit of God, that'll bring you into believing, obedience, forgiveness. The realm of faith is a realm that is unseen. And it operates on words, supposed to be what? What kind of words? Supposed to be operating on words of faith, the word of faith. You are a new creature. You've entered into a new realm of existence. In other words, when you receive Jesus, say, this is a low life. I don't receive Jesus. Jesus brings me up here to a higher life. It's a whole new ball game with different set of rules. And when you live, the just shall live by faith, you can't go down here no more. This is the old man. See, new rules. If any man looks back after putting his hand to the plow, 
And you look back, wherever you look at, you go, you end up going back. And looking back means you come back down here. No, we want to stay up here. How is the only way you can stay up here? Know that you are being kept by the word of his power. He going to keep you up here. You can't keep yourself up here. Faith. Faith. That's the reason why it says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they're the who? They're sons. Then you got people, as many as are led by the flesh. First thing, since, well, this is what I think, and this is what I believe, and this is how I feel. This is I, 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 me, 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 my, mine, mine. First thing, unbelief. What else? Disobedience. And then the next one is unforgiveness. Oh, I forgive her, but I ain't going to forget. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we all been there. We've all been here to this low life. And you said, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. The same you said that he brought you higher. But because you didn't have the knowledge and you was familiar with what? The old life. This way. <laughs> you didn't have no teaching. So you came back down here. But the church on Sunday, praise the Lord, glory to God. And then when the Sunday service over it, I don't care nothing about you. I can't stand you. No, I know what I want to do. I do whatever I want to do. Then Sunday come. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We just all that. See, coming to church got to line up with your life. You can't have a dumb life over here and a fruitful life. It doesn't work that way. You have been promoted from the low life to the high life. Whole new set of rules. And who rules are they? They God's rule. Who do you belong to? You belong to God. When you know this and stay up there, as Mamie said, they can't touch. Can't nothing touch you. Nothing. All what the world has and throw at you. If you stay here, that stuff just evaporates, disappears. But we talking about being led by the Spirit. Now, Jesus said he got spiritual sons and he got carnal sons. <laughs> See, he the head of the church. I'm not. Jesus is the head of the church. You're not either. You can't judge because you're not a judge. You ain't the judge. Every time you judge somebody, you're judging yourself. How you judge a person, that same is measured back to you. Why you want to judge something you don't know about and so you can get it? That's dumb. <laughs> that is so dumb. When it comes to the word of faith, all of God's words are word of faith. They're his words. You're going to frame your world by building it with the word of faith. The words of faith creates. The word of faith creates. My hair follicles are growing back because of the word. Anything wrong with your body, I don't care what it is. You put the word on it. I went in the Bible and got every scripture verse that had to do with legs, eyes. <laughs> God created the seeing eye and the hearing ear. I'll never have no eye problem, and I ain't going to have no hearing problems. I even find some with teeth. So what you do, the first thing you do with faith-filled, truth-filled words, as they are ministered to you, as you read them, as you come in contact with the Holy Spirit, these faith-filled words have to be held fast. You got to hold fast to it. I don't care what happened. You got to hold fast. No, the words say. I don't care what you say, the words say. And see, since I program myself like that, every time somebody said a word, say something about the word, everything just starts moving, like searching. Sound like something is out of order. Ain't nothing out of order. I got to quit that. <laughs> I just have to quit it. But that's how I am. So what I need, I need to temper it in love. That's all. You can have all the knowledge you want, but if you don't operate out of that knowledge in love, it ain't going to work no way. So see, I like to tell on myself. See, that helps me. I can't think of nothing that y'all don't know about me. I don't have a private life. My life is supposed to be a what? An open book. All right? Hold fast. You go hold fast to God's word because that's God. It's like you got God and you ain't going to let him go. When you get the word of God, this is God himself speaking to me. I got him and I ain't going to let him go. Even got to take yourself back there to Jacob when he <laughs> held on to that. It was calling for a blessing. But you got his blessings already. You take the word of God and you hold on to it. Now you holding on to it. The next thing you got to do is appropriate it. Well, Cicely, I thought appropriating it was the same thing. Nuh-uh. Appropriate means to receive it. I can hold on to the, this Bible all day long. Hold on to it. I ain't going to let this Bible go. It's mine. Same thing about the word. You can hold on to the word. It's mine. It can be yours in your head. It can be yours in your hand. But you got to receive it where? In the heart. That's the only place to go work. It don't work in your head. 
The word does not work in your head unless your head needs to be healed. <laughs> it will heal your brain. It'll make the simple-minded quick. It'll do things for you. So I got the word of God. I got an exceeding great and precious promise, and I'm going to hold to it. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to pray it until it drops down in my heart. Now, when it drops down into my heart, it becomes assimilated. I possess it now. You can take it from me. You can talk me out of it. It's my devil knows when he cannot come against you concerning the word. So he moves to something else. The devil ain't dumb. Well, that's in the heart. Now nah, I can't pull that up. Oh, I know what. I remember when she did such and such. They ain't took care of that yet. So I'm going to go over here and poke that. The devil do not mess with his own. He got them already. He messed with you to make God mad. You God's children. Why do you think people pick on your children to upset you? But God ain't upset. He'll tell the devil, see my daughter, go get her. <laughs> go over there and get her. She ain't got nothing of you in her, and you can't move her. All right? Once it's assimilated, it's you. It's your character. It's you. You can't tell you from that aspect of the word. Then this assimilation will manifest itself in a flesh, blood, bone, body. If you're meditating on the glory of God and, and you holding fast to it, that's where that light comes from. Let me shine. That's the glory of God shining through you in an earthen vessel. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God shining through you. All right, so you got that. Any questions on this? Now, if you sow to the Spirit, what you going to read? Eternal life. If you sow to the Spirit, you're going to read eternal life. Now, these are God's people now. If you sow to the flesh, what you going to read? Death. Well, it's death, but it's not death. Remember now, the scripture verse we started off with. If you don't judge yourself, God will judge you because you his. See, these people down here, they dead already. They dead. Okay? You are alive to God. You're supposed to be living unto God. But you are a disobedient child. you still his. Like Ananias and Sapphira. I don't know. They came against the Holy Ghost. It's different if you say something against Jesus, but the Holy Spirit during the work and you come against that and they knew better when it was yours. And when you got it, it still was your, why have you lied to the who? Holy Ghost. And that sounds like hell fire to me. Lied to the Holy Ghost. Why lie anyway? A lie is a work of the devil. If you don't want to tell somebody what you really need to tell them, tell them I prefer not to say rather than lie. That takes practice. <laughs> so death yes oh yes because he said many are weak and sickly among you and die so over here you're gonna be weak thank you lord sickly and then physical death but you still go to heaven we got to deal with the plowing aspect because we know the word of god is seed the word is the plow the word is the water so what is the purpose of plowing I'm going to tell you something else, too. If you are planning your money, God is a God of abundance. He's the God of the universe. He owns the earth, the fullness thereof, and everybody that dwell in. Grace is a unlimited, what, resource. This is called receiving. Remember the receiving over here? And this is called over here rejection. Now, when it comes to plowing your ground, what's the, on the wayside ground? Confusion. That means no knowledge and no understanding. In homes, the enemy, confusion. Because where confusion is, God ain't around. A lot of times I say things, and it might be something missing over here and something missing over here. If you would let the Holy Spirit put it in. What I'm trying to teach you is don't limit God. A farmer always sows to his harvest. He don't sow, well, I ain't got but a handful of seed. I'm going to sow this. No, he don't do that. He try to get as much seed in the ground as he possibly can, expecting a big harvest. Do you understand this? Y'all still in 1 Corinthians 3? Look in verse 5. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe. Who is Sister Lee? I'm a minister, an instrument of God by whom you believe. Because what? God gave me to you. Well, I don't, I don't think so. What? Well, that's your, that's your privilege. <laughs> that's your privilege. Well, I don't see your name written down here. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers, instruments of God's grace 
By whom you believe. Now, all that stuff I wrote up here for y'all, where you think it come from? It come from God. Now, whether you believe it or not, that's your choice. But he said he gave me to you, but ministers by whom you believe. The word preach, if you don't mix faith with it, the word that I preach and you don't mix faith with it, you'll never enter into God's rest. The word preach, you don't mix faith with it, becomes what? Unbelief. To you. Doesn't change God. Oh, well, Sister Lee, where is that in the, in the Bible? Okay. That's the reason why it says we are co-laborers together with God. That means the ministers, the five-fold ministers or the ministers that God give you, they labor with God so that you, you are his fear. I'm laboring with God to what? Plow your ground. First Corinthians 15 and 11. With grace, I labor. First he talks about the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. If you don't believe that, I'll never be able to help you. If you don't believe that the Lord put me up here, I'll never be able to help you because you'll never believe. If you don't believe, what does that automatically put you in, Sister Ruth? Unbelief. You got to believe God for me. Don't look at me for Sister Lee. Look at me as far as the word is concerned and how you understand what the spirit of God is concerned. You got to look at it that way. Look at verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Faith coming by hearing the minister message. But then I can minister all I want. The Holy Spirit can put the faith in your heart, but it's only going to be according to your ground, whether it stay there. You got to hold fast to the word. You got to appropriate and you got to allow to assimilate in your heart. God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ give you everything you got, but he can't make you take it. And if you don't do this yourself, you can't take hold with him. That's just how he got it set up. Hebrews. First he tell us about them disobedient generation. Look at 3 and 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. All right. Now go down here to 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached. If I'm preaching anything outside of the gospel, you ain't got to believe that. That's why you have to be established in the present truth. See, Jesus Christ has a present day ministry. It's a faith ministry. And in order to be established in the present truth, his gospel is the foundation the gospel is the power of God. Everything got to be built off of who? Jesus. If I be lifted up. He didn't say if I lift up salvation. He didn't say if I lift up the church. He didn't say even if I lift this up. He said if he be lifted up. So the message ought to always be concerning Jesus Christ. He said I will draw all men unto me. So my job is to lift him up. What you think your job is? Lift him up. Not the church, not Sister Lee, not the teaching. Who you supposed to be a witness unto? Jesus. You his witness. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So then if you don't believe when I minister, it ain't going to profit you. I mean, that's your business. For we which have believed do enter into his rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, and I am his workmanship. So I enter in his rest. I'm not going to preach nothing to y'all that I don't do. I'm not going to even talk about money if I don't give. And I give. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a tool. Am I perfect? No. Thank God I'm not. No, I ain't perfect. But in Christ. Now, you're not going to be saying you're a child of God because you know that already. You are going to say, I am the righteousness of God. Make a difference. Why? When you say you're the righteousness of God, that righteousness go before you. Make your way clear. Righteousness delivers from death. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm through with that. That child done growed up. <laughs> I got a letter in the mail. Government related services. I opened up taxpayer. You owe Louisiana Department of Revenue $1,700. If you do not contact us in 10 days, this came from the Department of Justice. So, see, your mind get to running. I said, stop that. See, I want my spirit man to run. I want my mind to be running. Try to lay that money on everything. Uh Uh-uh, we ain't having that. So, I'm praying. And the Lord told me to go down there. I didn't know where the place was. So, I called the people to find out where they were. If you need to talk to somebody, it was a recording. I pressed for to talk to somebody. They never called back. 
I went down there and came back and checked my phone. They never called back. See, the Lord know already. He said, go down there. So then I went down there. Place is quiet. I mean quiet. I took some change out of change just in case I had to feed the meter. My parking place was right there for me. Pulled right on in like I own the place. And what did they tell me to sit and wait for? <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you and praise you. I am the anointing of God. And I'm going to spray this place with oil. Fresh oil. Hey, let me hear your local key. Hey, let me. I don't have two people in there. I prayed. And then after the white man came, he said, uh, Miss Northern? I said, yes. I said, oh, you came to collect me, huh? He laughed, because it's a collection place. I said, my name is not on this letter, nor is my social security. So how do you know it's me? He said, well, we get this from the Department of Revenue. I said, listen to me again. My name is not on here. Neither is my social security number. So he said, let me go check. Then he comes back, and he says, do you have a business at your house? I said, no, this is my resident. I said, now, you got down here from 2012 up to date. I said, I done paid all my state taxes. I done paid federal taxes. House taxes come out of my mortgage now. So what tax? So he said, let me go check again. He come back. He said, oh, ma'am, it was a mistake. I'm so sorry. Well, so sorry to frighten you. I said, oh, no, I come under the theocratic government of God. He looked at me, and I said, and you got prayed for. I said, now, the one thing I don't like about this, y'all wrote this on the 24th. It's postmark on the 29th. And you telling me people got 10 days. I said, that's why they scared. They think they owe something, no name or nothing. Them fear tactics. I wasn't scared. So he said, this is not you. I'm so sorry. I didn't ask him what's his name. Sorry. So, <laughs> but anyway, I left, gave God the glory, praise, and honor. And some said, go back and check. Why do I have to check behind God? Something always trying to get you involved. God can handle something. God handles stuff. It's well done. And he'll perform everything that he said he will. All I want you to do is to hook up with the Lord Jesus Christ. You hook up with God. If you hook up with God, your prayer will be fine. You hook up with the Lord, your reading. You want to know him. And everything is him. You don't want to know nothing else. As I say, them something else, they can't heal. First thing you ask yourself when something happens, can this heal me? How about can it deliver me? Let me ask you one more thing. Is it paying my bills? Is it giving me life? No. Well, I ain't messing with that. I'm not going to take it to heart. All right, any questions on anything? Then even. That's all right. Y'all ain't going nowhere. Amen? Unless Jesus come back and get us.